The Jimmy D win for 2025 come as a bit of a surprise for us in late 2024, as we were hoping to see the Jimmy D Win 5 announced. Featuring the new AMD HX370 processor, the Win 4 sees its fourth iteration in this series. Let's see how it compares with the other processors and find out if it is worth upgrading from them. The GBD WIM4 2025 model is physically essentially the same device as the previous WIM4 generations. It measures around 6 by 3.6 by 1.1 inches and weighs 598 grams. The familiar 6 inch display with up to 1080p resolution supporting both 40 and 60Hz looks as great as ever. The H IPS display is bright and colourful and apart from very small text in games sometimes being tricky to read, I have no complaints about the screen. The display slides up to reveal the QWERTY keyboard. It has a white backlight which can be switched off if required. The keyboard keys are quite small. You would not be able to use them like a normal desktop style keyboard. It's more of a thumb or finger type usage. It's useful for brief typing such as emails, Discord chat, web browsing etc. On either side of the handheld we have dual analog sticks, a d-pad, fingerprint scanner, game buttons and an optical finger mouse. The left side has a micro SD card reader and a switch to change between mouse and controller mode for the controls. The bottom has a USB Type-C port. Along the top there are left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. In between those are the power button, volume buttons, a USB 4 port and Oculink port for connecting to an eGPU. And last but not least is a 3.5mm headphone port. The Win4 series has been around for a few years now and I have personally spent many hours playing on them all. The controls are spot on for me and are great for both modern dual stick gaming as well as retro gaming with the D-pad. The GBD Win4 2025 is available in two models. The first is with the 8840U CPU first seen in the 2024 model. The one we are reviewing today is the latest, faster performing AMD Ryzen 9 HX370 processor with AMD Radeon 890M graphics. There's 32 gigs of LP DDR5X RAM and a choice of 1, 2 or 4 terabytes of PCIe and VME SSD. For communications there is Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Powering the Win4 is a 45.62 watts hour rechargeable battery. Whilst running Cinebench on a loop at full brightness with 28 watts TDP, we've got a battery life of around 57 minutes. Average usage will of course be higher at around 3 to 6 hours depending on demand. In our fan noise and temperature tests, also whilst running Cinebench, we got a highest fan noise of 64 decibels and 45 degrees centigrade. As always, we have some system benchmarks to see the performance with other similar processor models. We have also updated benchmark results for the previous generations of Win4, from 6800U up to the more recent 8840U, to see the differences in performance. We start the benchmarks with Passmark, which gives us a general overview of the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage performance. We get a higher score of 8229, a 40% increase in performance over the original 68000U model, and a 10% increase over the 8840U generation model. PCMark tests the day-to-day -day software usage ranging from web browsing, working with office documents and image editing for example. We get a score of 7273 for the HX370 model, around an 18% increase over the original 6800U model and around a 5% increase over the newer model. Compared with the other HX370 models, we see around average scores when compared with the Duo, Pocket 4 and 1X Fly F1 models. Cinebench tests the CPU single and multi-core performance. We get core scores of 117 and 951 respectively. This is a great increase of 30% and 50% over the 6800U model and 17 and 24% over the 8840U model. Compared with the other HX370 models we see identical single core scores as expected and around average scores for multi-core performance. Geekbench 6 also tests single and multi-core performance. We see a 40 and 37% increase over the 6800 u model and 17 and 10% increase over the 8840U model. 
Compared with the other HX370 models, we see near the highest single core performance, though this does drop to the lowest for multi-core performance. For the gaming benchmarks, we're also testing at 1080p and 720p with a range of TDP settings to compare the performance differences. AMD processors have always had great results on Forza, and the trend continues with the HX370. At 1080p resolution, we see 33% increases in performance over the 6800U, and around a 15% increase over the 8840U. Compared with the F1 Pro, we see the windfall as a few extra frames at 1080p, and as we go across the TDPs at 720p, we see the F1 Pro catch up and overtake in some benchmarks. For Cyberpunk, at 720p, we get an impressive 69 frames per second with the HX370, which is around a 20% increase over the 6800U, but only around 5% increase over the 8840U. Not a massive increase here for this game. Compared with the F1 Pro, the Win4 nudges ahead by a few frames per second at 1080p, and behind a few frames at 720p across the TDP range. We see roughly 20% increase in performance on the HX370 over the original 6800U model, and a 14% increase over the 8840U model. There's larger performance increases than with Cyberpunk, which is good to see. Compared with the F1 Pro, we see a few frames higher at 1080p again. At 720p across the TDP range, we see it trade first and second place with the F1 Pro. Overall, we see good increases in performance across the generations of processors. If you have the 6800G model, then there's some great increases in performance with the HX370. Compared with the 7 and 8 series processors, we do not see as large an increase in gaming performance, anything really from 5 to 15% across the three benchmarks we used, though you may see higher in others. Compared with the other HX370 models, we see competitive results. At higher resolution in TDPs, the Win4 seems to be better performing than the F1 Pro, and at lower resolutions in TDPs, the F1 Pro does seem to have the performance edge. With some tweaking between CPU and GPU power, you can essentially get similar results depending on where you want the performance. Let's now take a look at some games running at playable settings. On Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, we are running at 720p resolution with medium graphic settings locked to 30 frames per second at 28 watts TDP. For Nine Souls, we are running at 1080p resolution on the high graphic settings at only 5 watts TDP. With Road 96, we are running at 1080p resolution on the high graphic settings at 28 watts TDP. The Spyro Reignited Trilogy looks and runs great at 1080p resolution with the Ultra graphic settings at 28 watts TDP. You could lower the TDP a bit as well. Carry On is a fairly low demanding game which runs at 1080p resolution at only 5 watts TDP. And Overthrown is running great at 1080p resolution with AMD FSR balanced at 28 watts TDP. We know from the 8840U generation and our recent reviews of the GPD Duo and Pocket 4 with HX370 that emulation performance is very impressive. You will have no issues running up to say PlayStation 3 era with compatible games. And for most systems before that, you can increase rendering resolutions, add graphics filters etc for improved visuals. Going on to discontinued emulators such as Ryojinx and Yuzu, you will see some increases in performance over the previous generation. First party games are still not all perfect, but there are many lower demanding titles that run great. And for Vita 3K we see very good performance on compatible games. With many games you can double the rendering resolution and tweak the graphics for improved visuals. And don't forget the GPD Win4 2025 has an Oculink port, which you can connect to an eGPU such as the GPD G1 or 1X GPU2 for even more graphics performance. We saw as high as 90 frames per second with the G1 and around 120 frames per second with the 1X GPU2 on the Cyberpunk benchmark at 1080p. 
Whilst the GBD Win4 2025 was not the next handheld we were expecting from GBD, it is a welcome addition to the series as a yearly refresh. If you have the original 6800G model, then the performance increases are definitely worth considering. You get a massive bump in gaming performance, allowing more modern titles to be playable or run at higher graphics settings or lower TDPs. With the 7840U and 8840U models, the benchmark results were quite similar due to the 780M GPU used in both. We do see an overall decent increase in performance when compared with the HX370 and 890M GPU. Admittedly, it varies between games how much extra performance there is, but generally you will see improvements. If you are new to handheld gaming, then the GBD Win4 2025 is an excellent choice to get started with. The form factor is great, pocketable to an extent, or it can be easily stored in a small bag for easy pick up and play just about anywhere. The performance for this size of handheld is top notch, easily outpacing rivals such as the Steam Deck and ROG Ally. You can learn more about and order the GBD Win4 2025 model from us at droix.co.uk and droix.net. And don't forget, our GBD devices come with a two years warranty instead of the usual one year. Before you go, please subscribe if you have not already, as it really helps to continue to grow this channel. Thanks for watching and we will see you back in the next video.